So lathe cleaned, I think I can uh, safely cover it. Let's move on to part B. I'll take the lathe away from here. I'll just show you how to take it apart. It's really, really easy. All we need for this is a wrench or now an open key. Where I put you guys in the center. All I have to do is lock on the nut here and release it. And this is fairly straightforward. All you do is you take this out and the whole setup should unscrew. There we go. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to clean it up again. Okay, okay, I got the point. Nice and clean. And I'm going to mark these. So let's get started. I'll just take this away from here. And we'll have some more room to work at. In the meantime, don't lose the nut. I'm going to put it over there. <laughs> Very cute. All right. We have the lathe set up there. And we can clean things thoroughly over here. Let's get ourselves some alcohol and you piece of paper get cleaned thoroughly cleaned okay this is really really cute nicely designed if I may say so myself Handle is not symmetric. That's funny. A company that makes makes lathes and the handle is not symmetric. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing they have their bad moments too. Right. Let's see what we can do about this thing. Right. This is an aluminum chuck. Very fitting for an aluminum screw. I'll just mount it like that. Right, now some time ago my kids had some extra brushes, which is these wimpy little plastic brushes. So they gave them to me and I bought some from eBay. So I've been thinking what we could do is we could trim one of these to get it to fit. Now this is a bit long gone and these I don't want to hurt for the meantime. So let's take some scissors and what we'll do is I'll just um, choose and just cut them until I get the right sort of branch number of hairs and so on. And that that is getting there. I want to cut it a bit more. Okay. Got a few loose ones here. And another one. I think we're there. We get those clipped plastic wires there Let's see how it goes I've never opened this one so I have no idea how dense it is right I think I'll need my visors so let me get those and I'll try not, not to get into the frame if you don't have visors and you have a really fine job to do now you're not 20 years old anymore. I do recommend these. 
They're not expensive. You can buy any type you want. There are various types off of eBay. I'll be using this um, 3.5X magnification. So it's really, really nice and comfy. And I'll try not to get in your field of view, guys. I think you guys are ready. There we go. Right, let me take a look at what I'm doing. And I can see the marks now. now this is really, really soft. Wow, it's um, a lot thinner. Ah, I see. I think I need to mix this. This is unmixed. Let's try, try again. Let's see how it does. No, not really. Um, I think I need to let go of my chair. Drop down on my knees and uh, try again. It's not as easy as it seems guys Not easy at all. Okay. I need a thinner brush. Even this is not thin enough. So we'll cut it down a bit more. Well, things have progressed. I'm down to three hairs. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but there is something at the end of this brush. And whenever I take something, I can, maybe you can see the drops over there. I can take just one tiny, tiny little drop. And then manually, and very carefully, in a parallel motion, sweep it across the line. Now, I'm not doing it very well now, but under high magnification, I can do that. So I can take one clean it and very carefully touch the line marking just the line this is quite good by the way once you're done once the paint has dried off what you can do is you can just trim the edges off just pick off the rest of the glue the rest of the paint that's on there so what you do is you just pick off the rest of the paint that's on the sides and then you get a really, really nice crisp line. Really, really clear. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try it with this one. See how it does. And I'll show you the results. Because this is really, really time consuming. Another option I thought of was to print it. To print a um, sheet of sticker or some sort of thing. That I can stick on top of this top layer. The paint does dry off rather fast, but I thought of an alternative. I can't print 3D another head for this. I'd like to, by the way, I really would like to. And I'd do it just smaller than this diameter. It does have some restraints because this means the carriage can't move all the way, moves all the way back here when I'm using in the mill, uh, lathe as a mill. But um, it did allow me to see a lot clearly this way. Well, this is the semi-finished version, guys. Not super clean, but it is getting there. Still have to clean this side. There are a few drips there, but that's easy. And I'm going to redo the painting. This is really, really slow going. Again, if, if you have... The desire, 
and a few spare hours to spare on this project all you have to do is trim it really fine like three here is fine and just touch and go touch and go and that's it that's it to it so make sure you don't have any drips on the tip of your brush because that'll spread around but then again you can clean those with a q-tip and I'll just um, clean that for example I got a few smudges here and if the lines are too thick you can thin them out this way too so I'm pretty pleased I'm not saying this is perfect no by far no it's not perfect but it's uh, doable and more importantly that's usable because I can see the lines now I know that's not going to be perfect so this is the final result the lines are fairly thin I wouldn't say perfect no I wouldn't go as far as perfect but um, I did try to adhere to the original lines as far as I could I trimmed off the access as far as I could I'm pretty pleased I'm definitely pleased so thanks to to do I've got two more of these to do which is not simple it's been a total of two hours to clean up and set this up and this has been roughly an hour and this is not simple but I'm pleased with the final result and I think the lathe definitely earned it because um, I'm pretty pleased with that so let me oil that again Let's, uh, thread it on here put the threading back there we go There we go. I'll be locking that in place. Let me see. Oh yeah. So I'm pleased. I don't know about you guys. I'm definitely pleased. And I'm really, really happy with that there we go so this is set up next up are these two and I'll be ready to have fun with this lathe some more I'm also going to progress on this project which I've started and you'll see the video this is a heads up so to speak this is a clear acrylic this is um, it's called crystal clear epoxy it really is amazing no bubbles whatsoever I didn't desiccate it I didn't apply any pressure I didn't apply any vacuum nothing just pour and forget it does take three days to cure but it's wonderful really I you can really see the structure there I already drilled the hole at the bottom we're going to mount it using a screw to the lathe and let the fun begin we're going to turn a bottle stopper not the full bottle supper, just the head. That's it. So I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hit the thumbs down. That's fair enough. If you do have a Unimat and you're using this sort of trick to, to see what you're doing with the dials, um, let me know. I'd like to hear what your opinion is on this topic. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.